Okay. Do you need to unmute? You can go. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Lord for anointing this meeting tonight with your presence. And Lord, let everything come out of our mouth. May God be in the truth, and we praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God's going to lead us. All right, David, go ahead. You got to unmute. No, you ain't unmuted. <laughs> You're not unmuted yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. You still got a red line through your microphone symbol down there. And we can't hear a word of, you want me to come down there and unmute you? Lower left-hand corner. I got a big oh, ah, there it is. Praise God. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to my bedroom. It's my office, actually. But I have an office, but I'd rather use my bedroom. I got all my books here and everything. My bed. And uh, I have two pillows over there, but I use them both. Me. Okay. And um <laughs> So, this is nasty stuff. I just got to tell you, I'm so tired of it. Um, but I just got to endure. I just know the Lord has got me on the cross. And um, I told him, hurry up and kill me and get this over with. <laughs> so, where to start? I haven't practiced anything, so I'll just... Uh, I, let me say, ask, is, has everybody listened to the programs we've had, uh, the series of programs to talk about what's going on? You know, I think everybody, right? Everybody has? Okay. Um, okay. So um, when we started receiving these revelations, uh, obviously the dreams and things came from some of you and others. Um, we were receiving uh, dreams that were in agreement with one another. And uh, we got revelation from the uh, angels concerning the situation and, and in other ways, too. Um, I'll just tell you that we, the Lord has told us that uh, very soon, we're going to have to be moving into the supernatural in order to do our work with missionaries who are in a very dangerous country. We were just uh, talking to a missionary who was hiding out from Catholics and um, Jehovah Witnesses who were trying to find him and kill him. And, um, and he was emailing me and they picked up his email. They got they were, you know, in on his emails. Okay, so it's 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 pretty important to be able to talk to those people in some kind of a way. Well, we learned that um, you know, like Paul was present in spirit when they were judging the man in First Corinthians five. Uh, that meant just what it said, you know, that he was present in spirit, and. Um, so when I realized, you know, what the Lord wanted from us, I asked the Lord to teach me this. And um, we have uh, three regular angels and quite a few other angels that are guardian angels that are commonly around me. And um, the head angel for UBM, his name is Baruch. And... Um, so I asked Baruch to show me, you know, how to speak in the spirit and speak. So I, I got, I began to get pretty, it didn't take long. Uh, it was a gift given from the angels, actually, to, to be able to speak to them either in my thoughts or with my mouth. And of course, 
um, they could hear and they could talk back, and it became pretty, pretty common, actually. Um, it came to be very natural, like for me. And, um, so I haven't gone too far beyond that. Um, I have a little bit gone beyond that with other people and other people, you know, picked up my words in their mind and so on and so forth. It, it's not something I'm recommending to people. Um, if you are associated with a bunch of missionaries, that uh, you want to be able to talk to and nobody can break in on your language and what you're saying is really important. But for the average person, it's not important. And it could even be dangerous. And the Lord taught me about that too. It could even be dangerous. Because you're not, you don't see the person that you're talking to. Okay. And um, I'll try to explain that a little better. Um, and I don't know everything about what's going on, but I know quite enough, I think, to explain to you what's going on. When we first got these revelations um, from the angels, which came from the Lord, you know, because I've talked to the Lord quite a bit about all this, too, to make sure we were staying on track. And um, when we first started doing that, well, they were... First of all, angels don't dwell in time. We do. Okay. They, between themselves, they talk things, they speak things like a, like a prophet would. And I've always called them perfect prophets because, you know, they represent the Lord better than anybody, any prophet on the earth. And they'll speak for the Lord and they won't speak against the Lord. Okay. They, they can lie to you, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, if you've got a, um, an idol, they could tell you something that's not true. I mean, I've learned quite a bit from them, you know. I've been tested like that, too, you know. Um, they could lie to you. And I, 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 I first objected, you know, to Baruch, you lied to me. <laughs> and the Lord explained to me what, what went on, you know. He was teaching me and uh, testing me and so on and so forth. So these revelations started coming forth. And uh, at first, we thought they were all present tense. But as they began to explain to me, you always, the prophets always spoke something before it came to pass. And sometimes it was a while before it came to pass. And uh, we thought it was present tense. So we just spoke it as present tense. And then I asked the father, you know, why some things didn't seem to be lining up. And he told me, he said, because what you said and what other people said when they spoke for me were things that are going to come to pass. Now, these people think, oh, it didn't come to pass. They, they've done this with me for years. If we put up a dream, and it don't come to pass in the time that they think it should come to pass, it's a false prophecy. You know, and uh, they'll quickly jump to that. And, of course, we know that the longer a prophet, prophetic revelation is out there, the more people see it and know it and understand uh, the warning or the promise or whatever it's supposed to be. Okay? So... Uh, at the first, we thought that. We wrote it as present tense, okay? But then we realized, uh, I don't know what to speak on first here. Let me think. Um, then we realized that some of these things hadn't happened. I'll just, make, I'll just cut it short. Some of these things hadn't happened. That's when I went to the father, and the father said, they're going to happen. They are prophetic. This is the plan. It is going to work, you know. Uh, okay, I understand that now. And I do believe we're almost there. One of the things the Lord showed me was, um, even though he'd given me prophetic words and warnings, uh, some of them we've had for a long time, like the death of Kevin and the, and the death of uh, um Eddie, um, they've had those for like five or six years. 
those revelations, and they just they just keep coming. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that what we have said about them is correct, um, and we're having them still. Uh, just the other day, we had one uh, where uh, a person saw uh, Eddie and Kevin at the same time grab their chest, and they fell over dead. Well, um, so this is not something that's a questionable as far as I'm concerned. It's going to happen. But uh, when it didn't happen right away, people began to say, okay, there's something wrong here. Well, the something wrong is it was a, these were prophetic revelations of things that were coming. And they were also prophetic revelations of things that were hidden. Okay. Because there were things that were hidden from normal people. And, uh, but they couldn't hide very good uh, because, um, it would come out, and it did come out, and the and the dreams and the revelations were all true. They brought things out. Okay, they like to hide these people. They do hide in darkness. Matter of fact, I'm going to read this this uh, revelation that we just recently got. Okay, this one right here will explain some things to you, and we called it. Um, the frog and snake plan to attack UBM neighborhood. And this was Marie Kelton. So during the meeting, I had an open vision of a frog and a snake coming around the corner to a neighborhood during the night. A neighborhood is a distinct or uh, locality, often with reference to its character and inhabitants. The neighborhood's street lights were on. Um, and let's see, I think um, I'm just going to jump through it, not give you all the interpretation. The frog and the snake then turned into a wizard and a witch, each wearing black hooded cloaks. They like to hide. Because when they come out with their stuff that they have no proof for, well, it's um, they shoot from darkness, as the Bible says, you know. Um, the black hooded cloaks, um, meaning, of course, I believe that they're submitted to so their head. They're submitted to darkness and operating in works of darkness. The one that was a snake, uh, and, and as I've shared what the Lord shared with me, the, a snake has its poison in its head. It means deception. These are deceptive spirits. Turned into a witch and took off their hood and I saw short, red, curly hair. And uh, they put Eve. Okay, yeah. This is Eve. Eve is a witch. Okay, in fact, you know, uh, first I want to say one thing is that um, I have nothing but respect for the original Eve, um, the Eve that I know, okay? This is not the Eve that I know. It's not the Eve that um, any of us knew, you know, at all. And um, because I'm telling you, she had a good conscience. She was a good person. She worked very hard to come against actually the faction and to uh, bring forth her dreams and other people's dreams. And she assimilated these dreams together. We used some of them, didn't use others, and we interpreted them and so on. And and so she was a big help to me because I'm just overloaded. You know? She was a big help. She worked hard. And I, I still have nothing but respect for her. But this person is not her. And uh, I, everybody knows this is not her, you know, uh, but she is a witch. And she got that way because the Satanists, you know, um, plied her with witchcraft. Um, uh, first of all, Kevin lusted after her as long as he'd been around her. And at the same time, he hated her because her dreams were revealing who he was. She knew who he was. She's been with us since 2008. She knew him. Okay, he went out on every faction there was. Now she says, 
oh, he was mistreated. Nobody listened to him. Um, he had it right. He was correcting you guys, but you wouldn't listen to him. That ain't Eve. I'm going to tell you the truth. She knew exactly who he was. And she wouldn't have touched him with a 10-foot pole if she hadn't been plied with witchcraft and voodoo and uh, lust and uh, um, Asmodeus, which is a, a demon spirit, uh, a principality that actually makes women love a man that they never would have loved in the first place. That was Eve. She wouldn't have touched him with a 10-foot pole. Um, Asmodeus is the principality of a spirit, a husband. And uh, they make a person think or see this person as admirable, as wonderful, as handsome, as desirable. That's what this demon does. So they put that demon on these women and make a bunch of harlots out of it. And um, yeah, it's a sad, sick thing, but it's really common among Satanists to have of the wife of their choice. And, um, and and in fact, it's common in a lot of the world where witches are hired to make someone into someone's husband or wife because they use witchcraft on them. Okay, so that's pretty common out there. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to other people looking on. <laughs> But it is supernatural. So this is what happened to the women, uh, along with Eve, with the Satanists. Okay. Um, they, a witch, by the way, is someone that could uh, deal with um, familiar spirits. They commonly deal with familiar spirits. They can have a familiar spirit. Okay, so after I started doing this, uh, I, again, I was being taught, I was being tested, I've gone through tests with this thing, um, I'm still me, I don't lie to people, you know, uh, they call me a liar and so, and so on, I'm not lying, okay, uh, if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but I'm not lying, <laughs> that's different, okay. So I'm not doing that. Um, I've always, uh, I only read just a little bit of that nasty letter that Kevin sent out, okay? Um, I only read a little bit of it, but I'll just say this about myself, okay? Just in, in passing, it's, um, first of all, I've only had one wife. Eve's had three husbands. I've had one wife. Uh, we I married. We married young. She's the only woman I ever had sex with up until this day. And uh, when I'm uh, a long time away from her, which is, has been that way, uh, she wanted to stay with the kids, and um, and she was somewhat mixed up in the false revival movement, which didn't help things. Um, so. Uh, when I was long periods of time without my wife, I asked the Lord to give me a gift that I would not need a woman. And he did. He gave it to me. It's only left me a few times and I asked for it back and it came back. Uh, actually, Eve worked with me for a long time. I've never touched any part of her sexual body. Okay, I've hugged her right, and so on. I've, I've hugged her, but that's about, you know, it. Uh, I've never touched her, period. And she told me one time, she says, you have the most control over yourself of any man I've ever been around. <laughs> well, it's really just a gift from God, you know, honestly. And um, I don't get excited. I just don't like a man normally gets excited. I don't do that. I don't get excited. And um, so I really, we worked together uh, for a long time. It was very fruitful. And I have nothing but total respect for the original Eve. 
This Eve here is not respectful. Um, I'm just going to tell you, everything she says is according to Kevin. Anything he wants her to believe, she will believe. Anything he wants her to do, she will do. She is totally under his thumb. Totally. And the other women, too. She doesn't get to associate with the other women. And they don't get to associate with each other. Uh, and that's for a good reason. You know, compartmentalization is, makes things safe, you know. So, um, let's see, where are we going from here? Okay. When they, first of all, I was learning a lot about this, this ability to be able to talk. Not everybody has that gift, but when the time comes, if they need it, they will have it. I'm not telling people to, to look for that gift at all. There, there is a good, um, a good place for it, a really good place for it. But I'm not telling people to do that because it can be dangerous. You don't know who you're talking to. And uh, just to prove that to you, I got part of my teaching was this. Um, they sent a familiar spirit to me to uh, imitate Eve. And I talked to that spirit. And I got to know that spirit. At first, I did not know what I know now. Uh, I talked to that spirit. And l let me say this. You say, well, they could lie to you. Well, they could, but I'll tell you what. Uh, our, um, our angel, Baruch, was ready to jump in there and say when something was wrong. And he did it. And he said, no, this it, it, would, it would come out the truth. Okay, there was a reason why they used this familiar spirit. I'll tell you the reason. I'm learning a lot. The reason is we could not talk to Eve. We talked to Eve one time since the beginning of this mess. One time. And she was radically mean and ugly and critical and calling us every name and so on and so forth. Uh, it's not the Eve we know. And, um, and lying and, and perceiving things that were just totally wrong. Um, the last time uh, Michael and I went to go and to get the demons out of her, uh, she let out a scream that would have knocked the walls down. And, and everything in that scream was slander, lies, you know, false accusations, just spewing out of her. So when we talked to her just this last time, Remember, me and Michael were there. We were both there. We were witnesses, you know. And uh, she said, well, I tried to reason with y'all, and y'all wouldn't listen. It's kind of like the thing Kevin was saying to her, you know. But there was no reasoning there whatsoever, period. Uh, and you told me uh, that uh, I should go back to work uh, at, as a nurse. Uh, Michael was right there. Michael didn't hear anything like that. I didn't hear anything like that. She makes up stuff that's just totally non-existent. That's what she did. And she said a bunch of things that just, well, where does this go? Where, let me say this. I, I have a habit, and it serves me well. I learned this from an apostle years ago, that this was a good idea because there are people out there hunting for you. <laughs> and I had women throw themselves at me, and I wasn't interested. I'm talking about sometimes they were pretty nice-looking women, but I just wasn't interested. And when I went on that tour, I had them throwing themselves at me, and I wasn't interested. And I let them know pretty quickly, you know. Um, I've never been anywhere alone with Eve. Never. Michael will back me up. If I went to her house, somebody was going to go with me. If Michael wasn't here, you know, Brandy's gone with me. Um, who else? Um, 
I, well, I'd reach out and grab somebody. If Michael wasn't here, I'd get somebody to go because I would not set foot in the house. Leon went uh, with you, didn't he? Leon, Leon went with me. Uh, I've never set foot in her house by myself. She's never set foot in my house when I was the only one here. Matter of fact, she was out here sitting on the, the porch one day and the preacher came from the bottom of the hill, came by to use a cedar. He saw her sitting out there. He said, well, who is that? I said, that's a lady that works with our UVM and she, she helps us with dreams and things, you know. And uh, he, he wondered why she was sitting outside. I said, well, she's sitting outside because she can't go in my house if I'm the only one there. And uh, Michael was outside. And uh, so she was sitting outside. And if she came over and uh, uh, Michael was outside, she would not come in the house. I told her that. I've never gotten in a car with her alone. I've never been anywhere like that, any contained place, you know, alone, never. And I, I, I stuck to that. And now everybody can see why I stuck to that. I've got witnesses that there's none of that stuff that they're saying is the truth. It is a lie. All of it's a lie. And, uh, well, I mean, okay, so they sent this familiar spirit to me, and this familiar spirit was easier to get along with than the real Eve, and, um, you know, actually could actually talk to you and, um, and uh, relate to you, but she was a familiar spirit. It was almost like Eve was there. She knew Eve's habits. She knew what Eve was doing. This this spirit knew what she was doing, knew what she was doing with the men, all, everything, okay? You say, well, isn't that dangerous? No, because Baruch was right there. I'll, I'll just give you an instance. Um, I asked her, well, how many men are you with in a week, you know? She says, oh, I don't know. And Baruch spoke up and said, 12. She said, yep, that's right. I said, 12 in a week? I said, well, that must be pretty tired. Um, so that was the kind of thing that went on. This was a control situation. Okay. And uh, Baruch is, a, is the head angel over UBM. I think I told you that. So here's a person that has a familiar spirit who can act like Eve and talk like Eve and knows Eve's habits and knows all this. And if it ever got out of line, Baruch could straighten it out. Now, why would I need something like that? I'll explain it to you. We, we could not talk to Eve. We've only talked to her one time. And we could not talk to her because they put a restraining order on us when we went over there to claim our own equipment. We weren't in any antagonistic position or anything like that. We went over there to get our, our uh, computer and our materials, which they totally treated illegally. They took two weeks to go through all of our material and edit anything they wanted to edit and throw anything out that they wanted to throw out and make this say whatever they wanted it to say. We, they went through our stuff for two weeks like that. That's illegal. But the Lord said, don't worry about it. And we didn't. We just let them have their time. And when they got through, uh, they brought uh, the kids stuff that Eve dealt with, didn't bring back the computer. Finally set us, sent us some of the dreams back, you know. Um, the Lord said, don't worry about it. We didn't worry about it. We turned the other cheek. We resisted not the evil and so on. Okay, so I couldn't talk to Eve, but I had this person that was a familiar spirit that knew Eve and knew what she was doing and everything. And not only that, that angel standing there, the, the, the three angels that are normally, you know, here that Eve talked to herself and trusted them explicitly. Now she does not believe in angels. And she does not believe in dreams. 
Now, Eve had the most accurate dreams of just about anybody. But suddenly she turned against all of them. This is how totally reversed a person's mind becomes when it's under these spirits. Um, and if you think it wasn't voodoo, the last thing Eve did over here was take a camera. She'd never done this before and took pictures of everybody. What do you think that was? I knew what it was afterwards. I thought that was for voodoo. So, and of course, they have thrown the kitchen sink at everybody over here. Everybody's been practiced at dropping this stuff and casting it down and exercising their faith. I mean, we have been through some trials of them throwing witchcraft, sickness, curses, everything you can think of at us. Okay? And let me say, this is a test to clean us up. Uh, and it has done a wonderful job. I hate to say that because it's a bunch of misery, but um, it's it has done a wonderful job. There's hardly anybody left. I don't think there is anybody left that could be tempted to turn against their brother or sister and receive accusations or slander against them and all these things because God just don't want that. You can't have unity if you can't trust one another. And some of these people we never could trust. You could never trust Kevin. The whole time he was with us. He, he for over a year one time, he went totally stupid. He went out in faction and he lost his job because he couldn't do his job. Mentally, he was like an imbecile. He could not do his job. He could not drive his truck. His truck sat out there for a year. We took him in. The ones he had abused the most, you know. We took him in because he couldn't work for a living. He couldn't. Uh, I asked him to do a few simple computer things. He couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't drive a truck. So we, um, for over a year, maybe even a, up to a year and a half. I'm not sure I lose track of time. But anyway, um, he just he just wasn't there. And so we finally prayed him through this. And after we prayed him through this, he immediately went back to doing what he was doing before, which was lusting after our women, trying to seduce married women, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, we finally just called him and said, sorry, you can't do this no more. This is it. And this was like the fourth time in a row, and there was witnesses every time. So, I mean, we got witnesses. <laughs> we are the ones that have the witnesses. And he thinks he has a witness now, but it's he, and he can't tell the truth if her life depended upon it. And I'm not saying that against Eve. It's what they threw on her. Um, so when we just laid our foot down and said, no, you can't do this no more. This is it. This is the end. No more. No more. We didn't drive him out. He snuck out. The next day he had was sneaking stuff out into his truck. Uh, and he got his truck loaded up. And in the middle of the night, I think he took off. Um, or well, by morning he took off and then he immediately pulled our site down because those demons hate what we do They're, they hate the truth they hate the word of God and they hate Jesus Christ and they hate me and they hate Jesus in me that's what they do they're Satanists they are the direct opposite of what we are so he Tore the site down. He said, no, Michael did it. But well, they always blame somebody else. But the problem is, when we went to Apple, um, we told them that as soon as we tried to put something back up, it would be taken down immediately. So I was standing there next to Brandy when he was talking to the lady. And uh, she said, well, only one person can do that. 
And we have to tell them every time a change is made on that site. And there's only one person that can do that. But they can take it down immediately. And I can't tell you who it is. And we said, he's Kevin Ray. She said, that's him. <laughs> so he always said, oh, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And, and he didn't, he wasn't the one that tried to break into our bank account which we made years before, and I'd forgotten that he was there when we made the password. This snake held on to that password uh, and used it to try to get into our bank account. He got caught by Amy Methan, who was at the same time going into the bank. And she's a very prophetic person, and she saw his face, and he had an evil look on his face. So, and anyway, he's been caught so many times being evil, doing evil, lusting after all women. Uh, I don't, at one time there were five different women in our local assembly who had had dreams uh, that he molested them. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's with his mind. He's doing it in his head. But well, let me tell you, that wasn't his plan. And that's not why they pile these this witchcraft on people. They want they the biggest prize they ever got was Eve. Because all of those factious leaders hated Eve because of her dreams. It identified them. It, it shut them down. They hated her. At the same time, Kevin was lusting after her the whole time. And she knew it too. She told me so. And five women that he was molesting. And well, I thought, it's just in the head. It's just, no, no. He knows how to do this. Okay. He didn't start out as expert of a Satanist as he is now. He learned a lot. He learned it fast. And the devil was willing to help him because the devil doesn't like us. He don't like us. He don't like what we do. So, <clears throat> um, the Lord told me when I was questioning, first I questioned Baruch, and then I went to the Lord, and I did that quite often. I wanted to make sure everything was square. Uh, Baruch's been square with us, except when he taught me about uh, uh, having an idol because I, I went through a test like that and he taught me about how they can actually tell you something that's not true because you have an idol. Ezekiel 14, read it. You'll see what I'm talking about. God said, I'll answer them according to the idol. So it was, I, I mean, I've been getting some good teaching, you know, and, um, and learning a lot. So, but this familiar spirit was quite amiable and telling us lots of things that this angel knows. These angels know. They know everything. They can even go, they don't dwell in time. They can even go back in your life. And and I asked them one time, I asked him one time, I said, can you go back and make a, a video of Kevin from the beginning? He said, we can do it. <laughs> I said, would it be acceptable? Would it have a timestamp and all that? He said, yep, it would be acceptable. I said, no. So I've thought about doing that because he don't know. We can know everything about it. Everything. Even more than Eve knows with all of her dreams. We can know everything about him. We can know everything about her. And um, if you ask the right questions, they don't always volunteer things, but if you ask the right questions, you'll, you'll get an answer. And um, they're not real talkative, uh, um, these angels. They're not real talkative, you know. Um, they're not like a lot of people. <laughs> uh, they, their, words, they, their words are sparing, uh, but they're accurate. Uh, we've got um, a couple of guys who were obviously overbearing and uh, 
prideful and uh, on the verge of uh, falling out with the uh, faction because they just didn't feel like they were being respected enough. And um, we knew who they were. And um, the angels gave us, voluntarily gave us, a correction for these two people. Well, we gave it to them, and they exploded. <laughs> Like people with faction usually do, you know, they they just they just are too prideful to accept any kind of correction, and they usually blame everybody else for their problems. Like Kevin, Kevin is the biggest narcissist we've ever seen, and yet he says I'm a narcissist. Okay, now Eve calls me a narcissist, you know. So um, again, we couldn't talk to Eve, but we could talk to this one who was very familiar and we had one watching over that knew everything that was going on so uh when it became apparent that this thing wasn't instantaneous like we thought it was going to be because we were seeing things contrary like we saw kevin for instance brandy saw kevin for instance so we knew that um this thing hadn't happened so i went to the lord the lord said it's a prophecy. If, if a prophecy goes comes to pass immediately, uh, nobody gets to partake of it. He told me that years ago. You know, uh, In the scriptures, they spoke it first. And then it came to pass on time. And, and what they were saying, what he was saying to me is everything, all this is going to come to pass. And I believe I'm seeing the signs of the repetition beginning. Okay. I believe I'm seeing the signs. Um, so so I carried on a good conversation with this um what I didn't know at the time was a um a spirit. Um and it knew Eve very well. And the scenario I was in with this spirit, I learned it was a test. It was a test by the Lord. You know, Jesus was tested um, before he entered into his man-child ministry. You know, he was tested. And I went through uh, several tests. At first, I wasn't realizing that they were tests. You know, do you know how uh, it? What has to happen for it to be a test? It, it has to be a narrative that's believable. You have to believe that what you're in is something natural and normal. You believe it, okay? If you don't believe it you're it's not going to be a test you know what i mean um i'm not explaining it as good as i explained it to michael yesterday <laughs> but um the, the narrative has to be something that you feel uh, natural in and it's normal and so then a test is, if you don't know about it, this test can be an accurate test okay so uh, I've I've known Eve for a long time. I love her, um, not in the way that some people would think or take that as, you know. But I do love her, and she's a dear friend, and she's always been a dear friend. We always got along good. Uh, actually, let me say this: we were careful for other people when we were together in a crowd. Uh, we didn't act like we were in love with one another, okay? Because we were being slandered and we didn't want anybody to stumble. And we both agreed that we just, we, we were going to, you know, play it cool. We're going to be real cool here. We're not going to, you know, uh, bring anybody into submission or, or uh, suspicion, I should say, suspicion because of our actions. And, um, you know, um, and so we were just kind of cool towards one another. We did that to protect people. 
because we knew what kind of slander this guy was slinging around. The way they do it and the way Eddie did it before Kevin was he wanted to divide people. So he would accuse them of doing something wrong together. And he wanted to divide us. And so he did the same thing. Um, Eddie, according to Eve, had bisexual tendencies. And according to uh, revelations that we got about Kevin, it's the same thing. And they were in love with one another. How that could happen, I have the foggiest idea. <laughs> you know, it just seems so repugnant to me. But, um, but yeah, they were perverts. Satan doesn't have anybody working for him that's not a pervert. He demands they be perverts. It doesn't matter what, which way they get off Kelter, you know. He um, he, um, he he demands that they get perverts, and it's that way everywhere Satanism is. Okay, they're all perverts. All the top of the government, by the way, are perverts. All of them. And um, the deep state, the elite, they're all Satanists. They're all perverts. They sacrifice children. They're um, just every other thing. Molesting children. And so on and so forth. So wherever you find Satanists, you're going to find perversion of many kinds. That's just the way it works. And Satan demands that they be perverts. And because uh, he's a pervert. <laughs> So, so here I am in this scenario uh, with this spirit that I believe is evil. And so the tests were, came quite natural. One of the tests was, for instance, I enjoyed talking to you. I, I, well, you know, most of our time together is business. It's been business all the time. We're, you can't imagine. Um, well, maybe you can. Uh, if you got a two hour program and you're suddenly thrown with a bunch of dreams together that need to be interpreted, and it takes time to interpret these dreams and to put them in the right order and to, you know, all these things, it takes time. And thank God for her because I, I, I was getting to the place I was bogged down. I didn't even get to read the dreams that were coming to me. And so, you know, uh, she filled the slot and she did a great job. She's very helpful. And I never, ever told her to go back to work as a nurse. I said, Eve, that's a lie. I told you I wanted you working with me. I needed your help. Where did you come up with that? Michael was there. He said, I never heard that. That didn't come out of her mouth. You know, She just says things that are just off the wall. They're just crazy. So, and again, I love Eve. I'm not trying to put down on her. I'm not blaming her for the situation she's in. Um, actually, I'm blaming Kevin because he did this to her. And uh, yes, she did make a mistake. She did go down there and tried to get her sons back from this bunch of creeps. And that was a mistake because God said, don't do it. I, I'm, I'm going to do it. He gave her dreams and she wasn't listening. And I said, Eve, listen to those dreams. God says he's going to do it. Wait, wait on the Lord. No, no. She didn't. She got taken out. But God had a purpose. And, um, well, I, I guess I can talk a little bit about that. Um, the purpose is uh, that God was going to make, he told me that he was bringing her through the whole thing all the way to the bottom. That's where she is now, I believe. I hope that's the bottom. <laughs> okay. Uh, because she was going to be uh, an advocate for women who have been uh, molested and uh, taken into these um, situations by Satanists. And this, believe me, this is all over the nation and the world. When, it, when the scripture talks about casting down Satan and his demons, those demons are in those people, especially those leaders. Um, a, a principality was in Kevin and all the rest of them bowed to that. I mean, they all submitted, 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 you know, to that principality. And um, 
you know, uh, we bound him and, and so on. But the Lord had a purpose in this war against us to teach us. He caused us to be very careful uh, how we treat one another, how we accept things in our mind about one another. Uh, you know, the, the, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Well, some people think they're his little helpers, right? So they accept these accusations, you know, and they don't belong in the church. If a person does not forgive, they're turned over to the tormentors. And guess what one of them is? Faction. Gone. They're gone. They're not dependable. They, they are not there for peace and love. And they're moved. God moves. He just drops that on them and they're gone. Okay. So he's he has shown us over the years, every time somebody with those spirits left, the atmosphere lifted. <laughs> Everything got better. It didn't matter if they were expert musicians when they left. It, it didn't seem to make a difference. Uh, we all were lighter. We all felt the difference. You know, uh, I had people asking me uh, when somebody who had a factious spirit was playing the guitar and, and so on and so forth. And um, they asked me, how come when he plays the guitar, I see demons going everywhere? I said, well, that's just... You know, you identified the problem, <laughs> you know. So that's true that even their music brought demons. And uh, if they had them, they brought demons. So um, again, I'll just say I love Eve. I want her back. I want her fixed. We've had the most wonderful dreams that tell us exactly that. And what the Lord told me was she's going to experience it all because she's going to be an advocate for women that have gone through this and need to be straightened out. And um, now, you know, uh, Baruch, again, the angels don't dwell in time. When you tell them something, um, they know it'll happen on time. And sometimes it's a test. It's a trial. You know, they don't, they, they can speak up and say, no, don't do that. You, this is, no, but a lot of times they won't. They just sit there and watch and listen. That's what they do a lot of times. And they want to see your reactions. And believe me, they're recorded in heaven. <laughs> so, so uh, I got to like this, um, this um, spirit that was imitating Eve. And um, we had good conversations, you know. Uh, and it was through this gift, of course. Um, it was the, the spirit, the familiar spirit speaking. Um, sometimes I would ask her, are you thinking this or are you speaking this? Or oh, I'm thinking it. Uh, she might have been with somebody, you know. And uh, I'm thinking it. And, and so I knew that sometimes she was thinking it, sometimes she was speaking it. And it was the same with me. I could think it. So <laughs> a funny thing happened with Chuck, you know, and a lot of people didn't know what was going on. Um, my mic was on and I was whispering, but I was telling Chuck, be quiet, shut up, Chuck, be quiet, be quiet. Well, well what? What people didn't realize is I was talking to my angel to go and tell Chuck that because that's what they do. These are these angels are messengers. You can send this angel to go talk to Eve and he'll go talk to Eve. And he'll because they do what they said they would do, and that is they obey us if it's not unscriptural or immoral or against God's purpose, they will go, and they will do it. See, they only obey God. Either it's God coming out of your mouth, or if not, if that's not God coming out of your mouth, they'll obey God, you know. But they always obey God. As long as we are in agreement with God, they will obey what we say. And um, 
they're there to be uh, ministering spirits for those that are heirs of salvation. And they do. And like I like, for instance, that time when God healed my tractor, you know, I said, uh, Baruch, uh, would you heal my tractor? And um, I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said, sure. You go down there and you pray on that tractor and um, and get on it and drive it. I said, OK. So and then I believe it was Eve saw two mechanic angels down there in overalls with wrenches sitting on my tractor. <laughs> God has a sense of humor. But when I went down there and I did what he said, and it was an act of faith, and I laid hands on it, I jumped on it and drove it, even though that gearbox was crushed. All the gears in that gearbox were crushed for that drive, that front-wheel drive. They were crushed. They were jammed up. It just wouldn't go nowhere. I jumped on it, took off, went down to the bottom of the mountain, and turned around you know, on the road and came back up. You know, and, Oh, praise the Lord. So they can teach you things. You know, uh, he taught me something I already knew. If you're going to go pray over something, act like it's fixed. You know, he taught me that. And I knew that already because I've seen it happen before. You know, I knew how miracles happen. Let me say something about Kevin. He has never had a miracle. I've never seen him heal anybody. I've never seen him with a prophetic gift, even though he acted like he had one. Because he had foreknowledge of something, he would say it like it was a gift. He, it was a deceptive thing about him. He did it quite a few times. We saw, and um, but he wanted to be acceptable. You know, he wanted to be, um, you know, gifted. But he didn't have any gifts. His only gift is destruction. That's his only gift. He's, he is gifted to destroy to judge, to send curses, and so on and so forth. And now he's his partner. And uh, But as God told me, she's going to go through the whole thing, experience the whole thing. She's going to be an advocate for people that are taken advantage of by Satanists. That's what he told me. And I know it's going to happen. So um, so here you had the situation. We could not relate to Eve because we had this, you know, um, what do you call it again? Um, um, restra restraining order. Okay. We had this restraining order. Couldn't talk to her. So we're talking to this, this familiar spirit that's very familiar with her. Everything she does, everything she does, and so on and so forth. And I would ask, um, her questions and I would get answers. And if the answer wasn't right, Baruch would step in there and say, nope, this is it, you know. So they couldn't get very far out of line. I mean, so about the narrative, if, if you don't believe in the narrative, you're not really being tested. You know, if you're not at ease with the narrative, you're not really being tested. So one time, you know, I got used to talking to Eve and, and I, I didn't spend my whole day doing it or anything like that. But every once in a while, I'd say some things and she'd say some things. And I'd ask questions about uh, what she was doing. And basically, I was getting answers about what Eve was doing, the real Eve was doing. And Baruch was watching over the whole thing. So uh, one day, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Eve, and I appreciate her, and I love her, and uh, uh, I wish she would be back in her job, frankly, you know, because she made my life easy, and uh, I enjoyed her. And um, But uh, th this situation was natural to me, and I believed it was real. And so... Um, I'd ask questions, I'd get answers, you know, what you're doing, you know, like, I, you know, the, how many men and stuff like that, you know, it's pretty sickening messing with these evil people. They are the most evil people I've ever run across. Um, so it was natural. So one day the Lord said, I don't want you to talk to her no more, you know. And I thought, is that you, Lord? Baruch, do you think that's the Lord? Yes, Lord. Okay. Okay, 
So I, I just cut it off. That was it. You know. And later I discovered that um, this was a test to see if I was going to make her an idol. I had another test about, uh, you know, I, I would go and I would cry out to the Lord for Eve to cast, deliver her from what she's in and so on and so forth. Um, you know, um, I'd cry out to the Lord and finally the Lord said, well, you're just going to have to just praise me for it. You know, so I had to stop that and just start praising and start thanking God for it. And I'm still doing it. So uh, I'm thanking the Lord for the dreams that we've had because they're right, they're true. Even the children have had them. Eve come back and she, she's uh, more talkative and more friendly and more of everything, uh, peaceful uh, and so on. So it's the, the better than the original Eve model, <laughs> I would say. So um, I don't, so the, the narrative had to be believable or it really wasn't a test. I went through several tests like this and I'm thinking, okay, I hope this is, is the test uh, like Jesus went through before he started his ministry. And I tell the Lord, I, I was told by someone, but I don't remember who it was. You're not going to believe who the next Judas is. I forgot who told me that. Anybody remember that? And then Eve came along. And she was by far the worst Judas of all of them. Not because she was a worse person, but just because, you know, I appreciated her so much. I needed her help in my job. Um, it was bad. I did not like it at all. And I wanted to see her saved quickly. Well, the Lord told me, don't worry about it. I can change her just like that. You, you, you're looking at her and you're looking at what an impossible looking situation this is. And I can change her just like that. And I know that that's the truth. And um, let's just see something I was going to share. I do believe that the time is coming when uh, her training is over and she's learned everything she's supposed to learn through her experience to be an advocate and the Lord's just going to set her free. And we've had the proof of that in the dreams and revelations that we have. I appreciate her so much. I don't have any bad feelings about her at all, even though she's lied about me quite a bit. But it's not even. I know it's not even. So, um, let me think. David, move a little closer to you, Mike. You're cutting out now. Oh, yeah? Well, my knees are almost up. Okay. <laughs> okay, how's that? Um, so here's something the Lord told me. When he told me that these are prophetic revelations, they're going forth, and they're going to come to pass. Uh, so I asked, well, when? And he gave me a duh answer, you know, like, you know already, you know, um, Isaiah 63. And guess what? This, the scenario is with the anointed man child. And he gave me this Isaiah 63, um, one through Three, I think. Where it talks about Jesus uh, coming as the man child. If you look at the end of 62, you can tell it's the man child coming. And he goes to the Edomite sheepfold. Um, and he um, he's coming from the Edomite sheepfold. And he's, his, his uh, garments are stained with blood. And um, I've likened it to uh, hemorrhagic uh, fever that I believe is probably coming um, because there's blood everywhere. Every orifice in your body bleeds, you know, 
and somewhere sometimes in between. So I mean, it's um, it's a really nasty thing. But he was judging the Edomites, who are, of course who were uh, Judases to their own brethren, like these people become when they get faction on them, and it leads them into witchcraft. And witchcraft has been with this thing from the beginning. The first guy, the first factious leader, uh, was seen uh, practicing witchcraft with his wife when the person who was flying over UBM in their revelation, and they looked down and there was just you know, confusion everywhere. He said, who caused this? Took him right over to this guy's window, looking in the window, him and his wife practicing witchcraft. That's where Satanism comes from, people practicing witchcraft. And they don't call it that at the beginning, and they don't even think it is that at the beginning, but they're basically praying against other people, you know, and um, maybe turning them over to the devil or whatever, you know. I learned you don't do that unless God does it, you know. Uh, I, that's another lesson. One another thing he, he brought me through in this was the real foundational powerful revelation that i do always those things that i see of my father um uh, in other words keep the sabbath don't do it yourself you know and i have slipped a couple times and done things myself um this is a this has been a long trial since 2011 and it's been one factious leader after another sticking their head up to sanctify our body they don't know that that's what it is, but that's what it is. They're sanctifying our body. There's a lot of people that want to come join with us, but not all of them are qualified. And these tests are what causes them either to be qualified or disqualified. And so um, I believe that everything that we have shared so far even though we shared it as it was a, uh, a present tense thing, all of that's going to come to pass. And um, it's not only going to come to pass here, it's going to come to pass overseas. And something else is going to come to pass, resurrections of the dead is going to come to pass. So uh, we're, of course, looking forward to that. The angels told us, that we were going to get a lot of support from people around the world because of miracles that we were going to have happen. And um, I believe that's one of them right there, resurrections of the dead. And some of them being a long dead, not just overnight dead, long dead. So that's just one thing, but other creative miracles, I'm quite sure, um, are going to be forthcoming. Um, Let me think. Does, does anybody have a question? I have something to say, if that's okay. Sure. I just wanted to uh, share a couple of inconsistencies that I found with things having to do with Eve, just so everybody's clear, if anybody has any confusion. Um, one of the things was this, is that somebody was told that uh, Kevin did not think that David was a narcissist, but Kevin has a whole website dedicated to being delivered from narcissism and a whole part of it is about David. Yeah. So, and you have to have a password to get into it anyway. Also, he doesn't have anything it, else to do. I mean, he right. has no other ministry. He's told everybody, my ministry God gave me is to destroy David Eels. And right. that's, yeah. that's a fact. And then another, another thing about it too, is that it's been updated this year. So it was like kind of a blank website for a while it seemed like but they updated it but anyway another inconsistency uh that i was i heard was that kevin was the one who falsely prophesied that david and eve would get married even though david has a wife kevin was the one who pro falsely prophesied that so if anybody call any yeah, part of that in email fact, in fact he said it was going to happen after eddie divorced her okay so and it I didn't just, happen. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, those were very inconsistent things about their narrative. So their their uh, witness does not agree 
if like you know just like with jesus it didn't agree they had a lot of things to say in accusation but it was untrue so yeah yeah he's, he's full of lies he, anything that he thinks will work he, he, he's not under the rules that we're under having two witnesses he's not under that he's never stuck with that matthew 18 15 through 17 he's he jumps to 17 every time he doesn't do 15 and 16 which is to get the witnesses and so on so he don't do that he goes to the last it, it, all he has to do is think it and he's right that's that's it that's the way these people are all of them are that way all they have to do is think it and it came from god you know it came from god so i didn't finish this <laughs> let me finish this real quickly i forgot to do that so the um the frog, of course, Kevin. Uh, the frog represents lust. Um, he was the wizard. And he pulled out this brown wand that was in his right hand. And um, it was uh, his, obviously his magical authority. You know, the wizard raised uh, their hand holding the wand, flicked his wrist, and all the street lights went out. So basically, they came to attack our neighborhood in darkness. Um, he has a, uh, a site where you can go there if you have a password, and you can go in there and look and read and so on and so forth. But he doesn't want it to be known because he knows we've got a lot on him. We could put him in jail any day. We've never wanted to. We, we, the